Everyone here is, uh, or almost uh, everyone here is uh, of, a, of an age group significantly younger than me. Uh, and uh, my understanding was that uh, it would be helpful if, uh, if I gave my thoughts, or some thoughts anyway, on, uh, on how potentially, this isn't going to be everybody's cup of, uh, cup of tea, but how potentially um, you could direct your own careers uh, towards uh, maximum possible success. Um, fact is that you know, we all have a lot of choices in life and uh, new choices open up all the time. Um, sometimes it's difficult to see uh, which, the, which, which of these choices are the ones that are likely to lead to the best results in the long run. So um, what I will uh, try to do is, is uh, is talk about uh, uh, one area where I think that Estonia as a country, but this is not somehow somehow restricted to Estonia, these comments, but Estonia as a country is extremely weak, um, uh, and therefore uh, uh, this clearly opens up opportunities for any individual who wants to pursue a career in this, in this, in this sector to, to stand out. And, uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is said, um, what I'll try to do is, I'll, I'll try to, to just give you my, some, some, some thoughts on why I believe that with better sales, <coughs> Estonia could, uh, could go places, could rise in terms of living standards and so forth much faster than, than, it, than, it, than it will if, uh, if it doesn't have a sales Mentality. It doesn't instill a sales mentality in, in its uh, in its young people, especially the the young people with a, with a business uh, education. Um, I will also talk a little bit about about why I believe that uh, a career in sales is probably for most of you, if you can direct your, yourself in, in, in that in that into that into that field, the fastest way to the top. In other words, to start off in sales, I believe, and I'll, I'll, I'll give some more pointers as to why I believe this, but to start off in sales is probably the best chance you'll have of, of, of getting to the very top of the corporate hierarchy. Um, so um, at the end of my, my little talk, I'd be very happy to, uh, to have an, an interactive discussion. Uh, there might be people here who, uh, who disagree with the things I say, um, uh, and I'd be happy to talk it over. Um, but uh, my talk will be very much geared towards explaining why it is that I think sales is key not only to Estonia's future, but to the future of many of, uh, many of you uh, uh, in this room today. Um, just going back to my own, uh, my own background, uh, uh, I started off my career with 11 years in uh, Goldman Sachs and Mary Lynch, where I was on the sales side. So I'm, uh, I'm talking, I'm talking uh, not only on a theoretical basis, but I'm very much uh, talking about what I, I experienced myself in, in terms of how I built my, my career. Um, Estonia. Um, small country. What's missing here is GDP per capita. It comes, I think, later on in the, in the presentation, but it's about 12,000 euros uh, per capita. Um, you can see that exports are a pretty big chunk of uh, total GDP. Um, in a small economy like Estonia, the only way to really grow is to grow out of the country, i.e. anybody who uh, who wants to see Estonia catch up with, uh, with, with, with living standards in the rest of Europe, for example, uh, will have to believe that this, this, this can only happen um, uh, through increased exports. Uh, Estonia is not China. In China, probably the economy can grow at a fast pace for a long time these days based on internally generated demand. Um, it has grown on, on the back of exports, but this, this will have to change. Estonia is, is, is like a small city in China. Uh, clearly there is, uh, there is not a lot of scope for, uh, 
for growing the economy purely on the back of, uh, of, of, of the internal markets. So somehow, somewhere, uh, existing businesses will have to sell more abroad, new businesses will have to be started up which will be exporting their services or their goods. And uh, in order to do that, uh, the, the businesses in question, and of course Estonia as a whole, will require people who can actually go out and sell, go out and convince others to buy the products produced by the businesses here in Estonia. Um, I, I started off by saying that, that I think uh, sales is something Estonians are, or Estonia is, particularly weak at. Um, I've worked in different parts of the world and I've never come across a people as inept at selling as the Estonians. Uh, yeah, it, it, I don't know what it is, but the, the, the idea of picking up the phone and, and, and you know, trying to get a meeting with somebody else in order to convince them to buy something is, is something that, that most Estonians view as somehow beneath them. Uh, you have no idea of how many meetings I've sat in at different companies and so forth over the years uh, where I've sat on supervisory boards or whatever it may be, where uh, the solution to the lack of, of, of sales or the lack of, of, of an adequate growth rate in the sales of, of the products of the company, uh, you know, at a high level discussion, you know, is, 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 is suggested to be resolved by hiring salespeople. Yeah, let's hire salespeople. From where? There are no salespeople. The managements of these companies, which you know, in, in America, in Europe, in most parts of the world, would be actively selling themselves. For them, the idea that they could go out and sell is somehow, somehow never enters their mind. If the company isn't selling properly, it's because the sales department is doing a bad job. Let's, let's hire a new sales director, or we don't have enough salespeople. But there aren't any salespeople in Estonia. They're very, you know, it's, it just, it's something that nobody wants to do. Everybody wants to have a corner office and, and feel important. So, um, the, uh, even the so-called salespeople, their idea of selling is very often to, uh, you know, put some time and, and effort into creating a good website, and then they go back into their office and they 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 wait aggressively for the call to come in. Um, it's uh, it's an amazing it's an amazing weakness. Um, let's. Uh, I've also heard people say, and and I'll touch on this, that oh, you know, it's, it's very very difficult to. Sort of increase sales, increase exports. Uh, uh, when we get the statistics uh, on a monthly basis, uh, they always show what percentage of Estonian exports go to Russia, go to Finland, go to the EU, go to Sweden, whatever. And these are, uh, these of course are sort of big percentages. Um, what nobody seems to, to look at very much, and you know, what I'll show you just as a way of indicating how much potential there is. Nobody really talks about the other side. You know, um, the EU. A lot of exports go to the EU. What percentage of EU sort of imports, in a sense, are constituted by Estonian exports? It's 0.06 percent. It's nothing. So uh, you look at it this way around. This is uh, the country which. Uh, you know, you can't deny history for a, for a long, long time. It was part of the same, same, same political entity, and you know, and Estonian exports add up to only 0.08 percent of, of GDP. Again, you would think that uh, with a little bit of effort, a little bit of sales effort, uh, this could be increased without too much, uh, too much trouble. Uh, even the, even the sort of the, the near neighbours. The other small countries with whom Estonia does a lot of business, uh, prime examples of course being Sweden and Finland. Well, Estonian exports to Sweden as a percentage of Swedish GDP, as you can see here, you know, add up to half a percent, a half a percent. And there's room for expansion. In Finland, it's already much bigger because it's the closest neighbor. It's almost one percent. You know, that's not a whole lot. I mean, if you look at, if you were to look at trade between Finland and Sweden, You'd be looking at, at percentages on a totally different planet. So, 
what I'm trying to trying to trying to do with these these uh, these examples is is just point out how much potential there is out there. And you know, as we go into talking more about sales uh, as such, um, point out why it is that nobody should feel that they're banging their heads against the wall if they go out and try to sell Estonian products. They're being sold already, just that they're not being sold in sufficiently large quantities to, to maintain um, the sort of economic growth rates that, uh, that Estonia should be capable of achieving. Uh, in terms of uh, sales skills, I, how sales-minded, sales-orientated different, different countries or regions are, I think it's fair to say, I think very few people would, 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 would argue with the, with the uh, uh, claim that the U.S. is a world leader in terms of sales. In the U.S., most companies are led by people who have risen through the sales departments of their organizations. The CEOs of most American companies are actively, aggressively involved in the sales efforts of their companies. Um, this is part of, part of uh, the American way of doing things in business. Uh, even in schools, when kids are told about business, sales is what's emphasized. You have to learn to get up and talk and be, 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 you know, be convincing when you talk because you're going to have to go into, 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 into business and, uh, and as likely as not, you might end up in sales. And if you're not convincing, if you don't have self-confidence, you're not going to be a very good salesperson. Europe has been learning from America. Um, my career started off, as I mentioned, uh, uh, in in Europe, in, in the city of London, working for U.S. investment banks. I mean, they were they were sweeping the streets with the European competition at the time, dramatically increasing market share because they were so much more focused on sales. The Europeans, they were like the Estonians; they were aggressively waiting for the phone call to to to, to for the phone to ring. Um, the uh, the uh, but the EU, of course, has been learning, and uh, you know, I mean, statistics can be interpreted in a million different ways. But you know, I think what, what these statistics are showing is that, to significant to a significant extent, um, the most sales-minded large economy in the world is also the richest large economy in the world, um, and probably there is some correlation between the two. Uh, what can be achieved? Estonia is a small country. Singapore is a small country. In, uh, when it achieved independence in the early 60s, Singapore had a GDP per capita that was lower than Ghana's. Ghana is a country in Africa. Um, today, Singapore has a GDP per capita that is higher than uh, Finland and Sweden. Uh, how is that possible? The country was built up on the, on the idea of, of being small but in a region where there was a lot of opportunity. Singaporean businesses are all regional businesses. They make their money by selling their superior capabilities in product manufacturing and services to the region around them. It's a sales-driven economy, which is why it's gone from being poorer than an African country to being richer than, Scandi than, 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 than some of the Scandinavian countries. Uh, say the key, again, is, is sales. You say, well, can it be done in Estonia? Well, yes, it can be done. We look at the most, one of the most successful companies in Estonia, Primerte, it's, you know, it's undergoing a, almost a Singaporean-like transformation. Not because the people are sitting around aggressively waiting for the phone to ring, but because they're out there looking for new opportunities and selling. Their product is not unique in any way. There are plenty of similar products out there in the market. So it's, it's not by having a unique product that they, they're growing at this rate. It's by aggressively selling the product that they have. 
finding new distribution channels, convincing new, you know, new potential partners to become real partners. Um, and you know, we all know what the results look like. So, uh, you know, Estonia can be successful, but what it needs is a, is a shift in its mentality. It needs to become sales orientated in its thinking. So, why, why a career in, 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 in sales? Um, it's one thing to talk about why it's important for Estonia to become more sales focused, sales orientated. But why should, you know, potentially some of you rethink your careers and say, hey, maybe I should gear myself more towards the opportunities of sales. Um, oops. Um, we really are talking about Estonia as the proverbial land of the blind when it comes to sales. And in the land of the blind, as everyone knows, the one-eyed man is king. Uh, what I'm saying is that you don't have to be the best salesperson in the world to be successful in Estonia, because you're surrounded by people who are even a hell of a lot worse. So, uh, but you know, by, by going into sales, however, you will definitely be in an area where your services will be will be sought after. Estonians are not brought up to sell. So, you know, schools do not talk about sales as part of you know what you'll be doing when you grow up. Our schools do not bring up kids, at least to the best of my knowledge, to uh, stand up and you know make presentations to the class and you know fend off critical questions and uh, you know people are, kids are not brought up to be self-confident and to to be convincing. People are brought up, kids are brought up, you know, to know their maths and to spell correctly or whatever, to get the factual side of things right, not to not to learn how to how to portray themselves in a convincing way. Um, however, if you do go into sales and you uh, avoid the uh, this this typical Estonian uh, sales salesman's uh, habit of uh, of waiting aggressively for the phone call and instead you go out and you start to actually sell um, and you manage to start bringing business into your company you will become a very 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 important person to your company very very fast just because you know whoever brings in the business ultimately you know is indispensable to the company uh, a company can't do without business if you show that you can bring in business successfully, then you are not just one of 50 or 100 or 200 employees. You are the employee that stands out. You are the employee that the, the, the managing director or the owner of the company comes to talk to because he wants to find out or she wants to find out what you think you can do next month. He doesn't care about all these other people who sit there and, and do their thing, even if they do it very competently. Because he is going to come to you and talk to you, because you're the one who's going to make the difference to whether or not you know he can increase profits or not. So uh, you know, if you if you go into sales, you're going into something which is not done very well here in Estonia, but is of essential importance to every company in this country. Um, the you don't have to be excellent. You don't even have to be good. You just have to be competent and you will be a very, very important member of whatever company you're working for. So, oops. if you do go into sales, you might ask yourself, fine, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a shot, I'll try to, try to sort of see if maybe I, I should redirect my career or whatever. And, and look more at what can be done in sales. What is it going to mean to me? You know, my company will benefit from it, but what's it going to mean to me? Yeah, maybe you know, maybe uh, uh, you know, it's worth it, but only if, if there's something in it for me. Logical, natural, and fair uh, question to ask. Well, I think 
it's very, very clear that if you are even a competent sense person, you will quickly, very, very quickly find that you, your importance to the company is such that even without asking, you will find yourself earning significantly more than people that you went to school with, that you went to university with, that you studied with. Because, you know, being on a sales side is simply something that is so much more important to your company. There are so few people who really are, you know, capable of doing it. Hopefully this will change in the future, but at the moment that's certainly the case, that you're clearly going to be paid more. You're going to be paid more than the engineering types or the finance types, simply because there are fewer of you. I think in Estonia today there are great engineers. Um, finance used to be a problem a long time ago. Today I think there are lots of uh, very well-educated people with, with the ability to handle the financial aspects of the business. What's missing is the, is the sales side. You know, and I'm not saying they're running, 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 running it incompetently, but I'm saying that if they had a better understanding of what the clients out there are really looking for, they can take better decisions. So at the very least, I believe companies would want to have people from the sales side in the management teams, which in a, in, in, in a remarkably high number of, 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 of cases today in Estonia, it's not the case. You can have management teams and not a single person from the sales side, not a single person who actually knows what the customers want, is sitting on a management team, which is, you know, to me is unbelievable. But that's how it is. These management teams tend to be focused, tend to be dominated by the engineering and the financial types. This will change. And, and um, because, I mean, any company that really wants to be successful can't afford to, 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 to do it. And, uh, and not only will sales side people find themselves on the management teams, but I think over time they will increasingly find themselves leading these management teams. What does it take to become a, a salesperson? What, what, what should I do as an individual if I wanted to sort of go into sales? Um, it depends a lot on what it is you're going to be selling, but I mean, I, I think these are pretty much uh, simple uh, rules of thumb that can be applied. Without good English language skills in today's world, it's, uh, you know, you're not going to be very successful in, in, in any sort of at least uh, foreign sales. So uh, English is, is a prerequisite to, to being, being a good salesperson. I mean, without good English language skills, uh, um, you have to focus only on, on, the, on the home market, which is, a, as we know, a very limited market. Um, but it should not be, you know, one should not deny the importance of you know, Russian language skills or Finnish language skills or whatever. Any, any, any language skill is always welcome. But, uh, but even if, if you speak good Finnish or uh, Russian, it probably doesn't mean that you can get by without speaking good English. So English is, a, is just, just, you know, just has to be a, without English it's going to be difficult in sales. Um, you have to learn to understand the product that you're selling. Uh, again, uh, uh, the amazing thing when I sometimes meet people in Estonia who try to, to, to convince me of, 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 of something is, is, is how sometimes how weak their, their grasp of the actual product is that they're, they're trying to quote unquote sell. Um, you really have, whatever it is you, you're involved in selling, you have to make damn sure that you know more about it than wherever it is you're, you're likely to sell to. You have to be convincing. You have to, and to be convincing, you have to know it inside out. It's not enough to read the instructions. You have to, you have to know what the com com competitors are doing. You know, you have to be able to explain why your product is better than the product of competitors. You have to, you have to be able to, uh, to, to uh, answer questions about. Unexpected questions like, you know, what, what, what's the environmental impact of, of your manufacturing process or whatever. You have to know your product inside out. Only by, by, by genuinely, genuinely understanding what it is you're looking to sell will you be confident enough to come across convincingly. 
Because if, if all you've done is read the instructions, which you know, anybody can do, and you think you can go out there and sell by basically saying that, you know, re-reading the instructions to, to, uh, to, to uh, potential customers, you know, you're not going to be confident, you're not going to sound confident, and you're not going to be able to close on your, uh, on your pitch, on your sales. Um, so uh, the, um, the salesperson should know the products almost as well as the engineer. Um, because it's, it's, it's what, what gives you the confidence to go out there and sell. Uh, when, 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 when the salesperson knows a product better than the client, he's got a chance of, of actually making, making, making the sale. Um, Estonians, as I mentioned earlier, have a really, really, really big... I don't know why, but um, they really don't like to, to sell. Um, Mind you, you know, you go, you go north from here and Finnish people aren't known for being good salespeople either, but, but I mean, over the last 30 years or whatever, they, you know, they've succeeded. There, there are a lot of companies there that do rather well and, and, and have sales organizations that work. So it's not, there's nothing ethnic about it. You know, it can be done. Um, uh, the only, you know, it would be interesting if any of you have any good, 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 uh, good, good uh, uh, hypotheses as to you know why Estonians are so bad at selling. Uh, the only the only sort of rational explanation I've been able to come up with is that in Soviet times um, the concept of sales didn't exist. Uh, if you were you know, you know working as a, as a in a shop as a as a as a quote unquote sales assistant, then basically you you were a king or a queen and you allocated the stuff that you sold to whoever it was that that you liked, there was never any selling involved, and, and this is maybe an attitude that's spilled over into uh, into uh, into today's Estonia. People somehow don't understand the importance of sales, and people think that salespeople, by definition, are uh, somehow you know the low from you know they constitute a lower level of, 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 of within their within an organization. You know, the, the people running the organization, they shouldn't have to worry about sales because sales is something done by these people, you know, who work for them. Um, this, is, this is sort of an attitude that you very often find in emerging markets in, in developing countries. And, and uh, it's, it's, you know, as we looked at, the most successful economies in the world are all economies that are basically sales driven. The top management thinks about sales, worries about sales. Usually they come from a sales background themselves. And the less developed countries in the world are the ones who, who think that sales is something that you, you, know, you hire somebody to do sales. And you, know, you, don't, you don't need to bring this salesperson into the management team because he's just a salesperson. You know, the, his job is only to sell the stuff. The really big decisions are deciding how to design the product or whatever, or talking about the website or you know, whatever. You know, this is wrong and this has to change. And uh, 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 what the, the problem there is anxiety. People, for whatever reason, maybe it's because of this sort of attitude, are afraid to pick up the phone and make calls. Uh, there is a real sense, I think, in Estonians that you're being rude if you call someone because you want to try to talk to, to this, this individual about your product and maybe buying some of the product. That you know, this is not something that a polite person does. A polite person basically has a nice website and then sits in his office and uh, waits aggressively for the phone to ring. Um, so uh, there are there are challenges to overcome, um, but uh, you know nothing nothing beats experience. It's only by by learning the hard way that you will learn. You have to you have to just do it. And unfortunately, in most cases, most most companies here they don't have good salespeople to begin with. Um, because of these problems with attitudes and so forth, so you know it's very difficult to learn from you know from from proven masters. If you go and join a company in America or even most parts of Europe, they probably got an extremely professional sales division um, where you know you can you can learn from you know people who've been doing it for a long time, doing it very successfully and so forth. In Estonia, we don't have that privilege. You know, it's it's, it's going to have to be 
you know, something that people have to have to learn by trial and error. Um, but uh, perseverance, again, is, is going to be key to long-term success. Experience makes the master, but you only become experienced by, by sticking with it, don't, not giving up on it. So even if the start is maybe a bit sticky, a bit difficult, you just keep on doing it. So uh, um, that brings me to an end, which is you know, more or less in line with the timing. Uh, I don't know if, uh, if, if, uh, if you have any, any questions or would like to discuss some of the points I made. I, I try to be a little bit maybe controversial, make my points a little bit uh, you know, aggressively in order to uh, stir uh, some sort of a reaction. Um, so I'm, I'm uh, again, normally in an Estonian uh, uh, presentation like this, uh, uh, people are very aggressively silent uh, when asked <laughs> questions. Uh, but uh, maybe here in this uh, EBS uh, alumni, uh, this is not going to be the case, uh, alumni meeting. Why it's so that uh, at the moment uh, uh, there is so active lobby from um, IT sector that the IT is very important. We need these specialists and we are lucky with them and, and uh, young people make these important decisions just go for this IT and have a very successful future. The biggest Estonian success story in IT obviously is Skype. Well, I mean, as we all know, Skype was set up by two Scandinavians who basically ended up owning 97% of the company and the 3% was then was owned by, or whatever, you know, I can't remember the exact percentages, but that order of magnitude, 3% was owned by the, the geeks so here in Estonia who were doing all, that, all the software uh, uh, work. Um, you know, again, the Scandinavians were the salespeople. They're the ones who created the concept because they saw an opportunity, they felt that there was demand, they went and sold this idea to, uh, to um, you know, uh, to the relevant uh, counterparties, to the uh, providers of, uh, of, of capital, to uh, to the uh, to the you know they created the infrastructure necessary to to plug this this product that's being developed by the Estonian IT experts, um, and they made almost all of the money. So uh, you know, great. Without Estonian IT uh, expertise, uh, Estonia would not have played a role in Skype. But I mean, that role was very limited in terms of who made the money on the stock. Uh, if, you know, a couple of Estonians, you know, real sales-minded guys had had the idea and had set up Skype, then, then you know, they, all the money would be made in Estonia. And I think the money made in, uh, out of Skype was so large that it would have had a major impact on Estonia's GDP. But the, the fact is that because Estonians do not have the sales scale, or did not have, you know, hopefully in the future they will have. Um, the really big money in Skype was made out of the Scandinavians with the sales skills. So, you know, sales is, is, is sort of a very wide term. Sales is about going out and convincing other people to do what you want them to do in order for you to do well out of it. And, you know, I think if you stop people, even, even sort of people with a business background in Estonia, say, what is sales? They, they think that, you know, what comes to their mind is, uh, is somebody who tries to flog, uh, you know, toothbrushes or something. Um, and, you know, and, and, you know, saying that, you know, if you buy a, buy a dozen, you can get it 10% cheaper. You know, that's not sales. I mean, sales, of course, covers also retail sales. But the, the sales that I'm talking about is the high level, sort of conceptual sales. How do you get somebody to buy their uh, machines from an Estonian manufacturer instead of from a German manufacturer? How do you get somebody to buy their, uh, you know, uh, some sort of software services from an Estonian software company rather than, uh, a, 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 you know, a Californian one or a Scandinavian one? Uh, you can be, you can have lots of good IT specialists, but unless you, you, you attach some real sales skills to, to, to these IT specialists, then you're going to have exactly what you have in Estonia, where the IT sector in Estonia is a back office sector. The real money is being made by Western sort of salespeople, if you want to call it that. Um, you know, whether it's uh, you know poker sites or uh, you know anything else, the real money.
money is not being made here in Estonia. The software work is being done here. But the real money is being made by the salespeople who make it all happen. 